Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. Welcome to the channel. Like and subscribe if you're serious about investing in the digital asset space. And let's get right into the information today. One taken, uncut. So one thing I want to go through is one of the best articles, again, from one of the best researchers researchers in the XRP community, guys. This is I am Legion on coil.com. We're going to kind of skim through this. I will have the link in the video description along with his Twitter profile. Um, if you guys don't have a Twitter, I get it. I normally was always against Twitter, but since kind of being an XRP, I kind of wanted to be more a part of the community and do my own research and i think it was really helpful so if you guys you know are against social media or haven't really given twitter a thought um i recommend at least checking it out to see if it's any you know helpful to get infographics and you know help with your research but without further ado guys again links in the description along with his blog as well and let's cover this and then i'm going to go over some additional news for xrp and tying it all together so right here the archives part six swift from i am legion so here we're talking about swift of course guys 47 years ago was founded. We can kind of skim through here. 11,000 financial institutions, more than 200 countries. Again, 32 million messages per day. And basically, as you can see here, guys, they're not necessarily the competitor. They are just part of the legacy infrastructure that will need to be updated, if not replaced. So as we can see, they do not hold accounts for their members and they do not perform any form of clearing or settlements. And again, settlements is where XRP would actually be providing the value. Reconciliation, clearing, all the fancy messaging, that's a little bit more of you know Swift GPI or X current. And then even with trade finance, we can see projects like Spunta helping a lot of the Italian banks going live. All right, so Swift does not actually facilitate the fund transfers. They are just sending payment orders, again, which must be settled by the correspondent accounts that the institutions have with each other. Each financial institution to exchange banking transaction must have a banking relationship by either being a bank or affiliating itself with one or more as to enjoy those particular business features. Now, the issue is that some do not have direct correspondent banking accounts, hence the clunky architecture, the multiple points of you know multiple intermediaries and middlemen different standards of messaging and interoperability and again guys this is trying we're trying to create the internet of value we already have logistics pretty efficient we have information pretty efficient and of course there's always room for improvement but with value transfer it's time to update all right so just to speed through this i recommend reading this as well we're going to kind of speed through swift we've talked about this gentleman here and now talking about some people that actually left Swift or have Swift backgrounds and came to Ripple. So we have Miss Marjan Delatine. Again, she is global head of banking at Ripple. She previously, as we can see, was a business director for Swift GPI, part of the kind of the sales team engaging and helping with the commercialization and you know business development and adoption of the GPI product. Again, not a competitor to XRP for settlement. This is all messaging similar to X Currents. Please understand that this is good. Either way, this is improving the communication and means, which is a step in the right direction for tokenization and DLT adoption. All right, we can see Swift here as well, head of business development, payments market initiative. So she has years of experience here again. Then we have Mr. Marcus Treacher, SVP customer success of Ripple, member board of directors for Swift, we can see for several years. And then we can also see here with the goal for widespread industry adoption and as a board member of the Linux Foundation's Hyperledger project, a key industry initiative on DLT, Swift will continue to collaborate with the wider financial industry to evolve open source blockchain tech. Guys, what you must understand is Hyperledger is huge backed by Linux, Hyperledger and Ripple both kind of fostered and created interledger protocol as well. So if you understand that Swift is a board member of the Linux Foundation's Hyperledger, do you really think they have no interest in utilizing Hyperledger, which is actually built on interledger protocol? There's a method to the madness and it goes very, very deep, yet nobody's realizing it. Well, I mean, I understand this community is, I'm just saying everyday people, they don't really see, you know, the opportunity to get true returns on your investment by supporting these types of open source protocols. All right. So again, nothing I share in this video is financial advice, guys. Continue to do your own research, question everything, but we're going to kind of skim through this. So we understand Swift and DLT. Let's keep going. We see Hyperledger. We're familiar with them. Please look into them. Again, um, obviously, we're going to see a lot of smart contract capabilities with even Ethereum, etc. All right. I'm bullish on many projects that solve a real problem. 
So we can see here 30 founding members. A lot of them are Ripple Net partners as well. And then we can even see huge groups like the DTCC. And we're going to show them as well. Even in 2018, they settled nearly $1.85 quadrillion. We have other groups as well. Swift, NTT Data, we know them. R3, we see Wells Fargo, Deutsche. It's just never ending, okay? Accenture as well, one of the original investors in Ripple. All right, now pay attention to Accenture. We're going to tie it as well. And then CME group, huge groups, okay? So we're going to keep going. We can see Digital Asset, IBM, Ripple, all these kind of groups are working together with this Hyperledger project so we can understand this. We're going to keep going to Swift. And now check this out. Swift completes landmark DLT, again, distributed ledger technology proof of concept in March 2018. Okay, so starting to experiment a little bit more with DLT proof of concepts, who's helping them kind of with this digital transformation plan? We'll get into it. So proof of concept is one of the most extensive, extensive Hyperledger Fabric 1.0 implementations executed in industry to date. We can see Swift again, they're just financial messaging, not settlements. We need something to connect them. We need, you know, new plans. What is the kind of global plan and grand plan? For settlements, do you really think they're looking to go this slow and it's going to take another 10 years? I do not. So right here in 2016, we can kind of see before that even, you know, DLT proof of concept with kind of Hyperledger. Look, Swift and Accenture. Accenture, one of the original investors in Ripple and also a partner that had a partnership with Ripple as well to this day. Swift and Accenture outlined path to DLT adoption within financial services. This was four years ago. I think how far we've come. Okay, and I'm not talking about price of XRP. I'm talking about the infrastructure being built in the overall plans. All right, API connectivity, etc. Swift to bring benefits of GPI to DLT and trade ecosystem. Now, I believe that this will have to do Swift GPI and R3 will be working together. Now, that's not financial advice. That is a little speculation, but it is not just random. It is founded on some facts and information as well. So pay attention to that. Swift GPI is messaging, but they still need a partner. They need someone that can be scalable, have fancy messaging with on a permission basis as well, and settle efficiently. And understand R3, they have Corda, their permissioned blockchain, and they can settle via XRP. And yes, R3 had a promise to get 5 billion XRP at discount from Ripple years ago, and something fell through. So they actually had a lawsuit with Ripple, and we do not know the disclosed amount of settlement or, you know, what they settled on. If they got their 5 billion, but it was a different price point, did they only get 3 billion XRP? Regardless, why would they sue to get so much XRP? They're not going to be dumping it on the market, guys. These are some of the biggest groups and banking consortiums in the world. That's not what they're interested in. My question is, why did they want XRP? All right. Perhaps it's because the benefits that we're aware of included with the XRP ledger in tandem with the protocol that they're working on inter ledger. All right. And all these banks are all backing it, but they're quiet about it. Why? Initial proof of concept to connect GPI with blockchain enterprise software firm R3. So they've already had some proof of concepts, guys. This is one of my speculative reasons that I believe that R3 and Swift GPI will be connected. You guys say it's crazy. Every video I do, you doubt it. I get it, but this is right in front of you, like actual proof of concepts. And you guys can find this stuff on the internet yourself. There's a great website called Google and you can do your own research and question everything if you don't believe me. All right, so initial proof of concept to connect GPI, again, Swift's GPI, kind of competitor to X current with blockchain enterprise software firm R3. Why? Why do they want to connect them to the world of trade finance? Is it merely to, and again, it's, it's blockchain enterprise firm, and they're looking to utilize DLT. So what benefits do DLT provide, and what are they going to be using? Okay, so right here, we got Fed's Faster Payments Task Force as well. We have a bunch of information of that. And again, implementing this by 2020, Swift is offering a gateway. And this was back in August, even before all this COVID nonsense. And now we have the Clearinghouse in their RTP platform. Remember... Fixing domestic rails first. Step two, then we can work on international cross-border. Okay, international cross-border, XRP. For settlements, at least. Now, instant payments become more ubiquitous. In the U.S., Swift said it will provide an interface to manage the requirements of sending and receiving domestic instant payment transactions on behalf of customers. Interesting. 
All right, next, Swift partners with the Clearinghouse again, and we've already tied them in with RTP, the technology providers for the Clearinghouse. I'm not saying the Clearinghouse is using XRP. What I'm saying is the technology providers, though, are already integrated in partners with Ripple. We have, just off memory of the Clearinghouse and a few of them, we have, what, Volante? We have ACI Worldwide, which is a RippleNet partner that does 9% of Swift's volume. So, And also, they send... What is it? Um, ACI Worldwide is $14 trillion in transactions per day, and they're a RippleNet partner, and they do roughly 9% of the SWIFT payment volume. This is not, you know, kid money. This is not you and me and retail money. This is true wholesale interbank money on the way. All right, and I believe that it will come quickly when it does. I think that whole slow and steady approach is for, you know, people that are trying to be level-headed in a space that, doesn't require, you know, that type of level headedness. It's going to be quick and fast. So Swift Pilots integrated payment validation services GPI captures more than 50% of payment volumes. This is back in 2018. I'd imagine that we're a lot more integrated now. And I believe that a lot of these banks are already RippleNet enabled. Okay. Next, we can see starting with the proof of concept in collaboration with R3, some documents. We see Swift GPI expansion with R3, live ecosystems with a need for settlement in fiat currencies. That is literally the need that they've been expressing that XRP can solve. Settlement in fiat currencies, a bridge asset, euro to XRP to USD. And again, that's a highly liquid corridor. That was a stupid example. But if you can actually improve upon it, do 24-7 transfers, and even have these spreads tighter in due time from true volume and high value transfers, it would actually still be well worth it. Common interest to build a settlement capability for distributed ledger technology ecosystems. DLT, again, the XRP ledger is one of the biggest, most well-known examples of DLT, at least on the permissionless basis. And yes, they'll connect to permissioned blockchains for privacy and even a little more centralized speed. I get it. There's benefits to both. But we, un we understand the issue of trust as well. All right. Swift and R3 are collaborating on a GPI link proof of concept. The GPI link will allow GPI payment capabilities to be embedded directly into R3's DLT platform. And again, remember... Corda. There is no live service or commercial agreements. We can see again, it is just a proof of concept. So don't, it doesn't mean it's going to happen, but I just want to show you it is there. Okay. So it's not just crazy speculation with tinfoil hats. There's a reason we're thinking this. There's a reason why, you know, the XRP community actually believes that there is a good likelihood of getting a good enough market share to see phenomenal price appreciation in the future. Additionally, as part of that, V3, Swift, no, it's, duh, 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 GPI solving incremental challenges. All right. Next, Swift will also initiate, you know, ISO and that standard of messaging. Okay, DLT, we've gone through that. Let me just kind of speed through this real quick. Um, okay, and then next, we've seen this, of course. This has been viral for quite some time. Again, the Swift GPI strategic roadmap. We can see up to 2019, and it kind of ends. We can see questions of going live, design, um, I believe. Yeah, and then right here, improve cross-border payments. Okay, there's all kinds of tracking. But again, essentially, this is all messaging. Okay, next, ACI, who we said was a technology provider for the clearinghouse and Swift. So ACI, as I've already said, supports around 9% of global Swift traffic, approximately 30% in the US. They offer services to banks around the world. We can see they want to con are wanting to connect and leverage Swift's GPI. They're already RippleNet enabled as well and also support real time schemes around the world. All right, we can see systems to support Swift. Okay, real time. Also, as we can see here, Swift CEO, well, former CEO again, and remember, he was right here on stage with Brad Garlinghouse, Ripple CEO. So, yeah, I mean, they just talked to each other at the Paris FinTech Forum or whatever it was called, just for fun, guys, just to hype us up. There's no greater plan. Come on, guys. Just think logically here. They are literally looking to improve payments on an open level playing field, and those that are paying attention have a true opportunity here. Nothing's guaranteed, but I just want to show you what we know. All right, so the quote from former Swift CEO, and again, they're sending $5 trillion per day, guys. I think the big part of Ripple's value proposition is the cryptocurrency XRP. Okay, so he says that's the big part of their value proposition, but why are you cynical? He says, there we do find that banks are hesitant to convert things into a cryptocurrency right now because of the volatility in the currencies. And again, we've already gone in depth. Brad Garlinghouse addresses this as well. Mathematically, it's still less volatile. Whether you're if you're waiting two to six days with fiat currencies rather than a three to five second transfer, it actually still XRP is still less volatile. Even if it had a crazy market swing, there's market makers incentivized to kind of help the system. We've gone over this in detail. Mathematically, in terms of time, 
still a no-brainer. It's kind of like getting the old guys to start using email back when, you know, they only like taking notes with, you know, paper or like kind of using like OneNote or utilizing the computer over writing letters. It's the same thing, guys. We know old timers like that. I work with people that do the same thing. All right. And it, I mean, there's not one way that's right, but there's one way that's more efficient. All right. Another reason for why Swift is hesitant, not willing to use cryptocurrencies is because of the legal status, as they claim, again, banks, you know, very um, conservative, risk averse, etc. OK, so this was a while back as well. But just pay attention to that. I just wanted to show you that all of these FUD points, complete BS, read between the lines. OK, he doesn't say we will not use XRP. He just says that we find banks hesitant. And understand, we've gone through a global liquidity crisis and now all these banks are going digital and they still need a bridge asset. So it makes you wonder, are they looking for panic to actually validate these changes? And yep, so this video is the Paris FinTech Forum. You guys can look this up as well. All right, Santander goes live with Swift GPI, another partner as well. 80% of Santander cross-border payments to be on Swift GPI by end of year. Okay, and this was in 2019. I'm going to speed through this a little bit. Now, tips. We've talked about them. Available around the clock, 365 a year. Multi-currency mode. Now, understand that the Euro system is huge, guys. This T2S, these target securities, this initiative, this platform is massive. They are integrated with Ripple, thanks to their network provider, task group we can see available network drivers ripple is one of them no surprise okay this whole euro system with i don't know how many countries 19 maybe feel free to correct me they are huge guys these are central banks networks we have ripple here network driver layer ripple driver at the top here okay this means something all right and we can see there now tasks we've gone through please see that uh Previous video I did, maybe like three videos, two videos ago. Check that out. This goes into the de detail. I don't want to repeat myself too much. We've shown CGI. Demore Sahami has some awesome infographics with CGI actually showing the roadmap. Specifically, we've shown in these videos where CGI literally says Ripple to kind of like replace and kind of replace the Swift system entirely. And it's on the roadmap. Um, I, I love it. All right. CGI has made fundamental contributions. I mean, literally for Swift Network for transfers in 1973, chip, pin card, API, again, DLT, this deep experience helps clients implement world-class services. All right. See these people again, we have Mr. from Ripple, Patrick Griffin, speaking with people from CGI, talking that, you know, of course, CGI with their intelligent gateway, I believe. Um, Ripple's distributed technology, their payment solution, and their partnerships and natural fit. They have a long history of shaping and driving innovation, helping to build Swift, the CHAPS network, I mean, and other payment systems as a whole. So there's no question. All right, we've seen this before. Executive summary for Ripple payment protocol. Here's the um, payment stack again. We can see that XRP's role would literally be at the foundation of this hierarchy. Pay close attention. That means something, something invisible that everyday people don't even need to know about. All right, CGI's approach, we can see Ripple listed again. Um, this font is so tiny, so I apologize. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see, does he? Yeah, okay, cool. Gateway services, FinTech, Ripple. So I know that's tiny, and there's actual, you know, plenty of documents that support it at a higher level, but it's just one of the many examples. Understand that each group we're going over, guys, task group, CGI, there's even, you know, there's plenty of examples. This is just the tip of the iceberg, okay? We're showing what we know. Right here, standard chartered, okay? Another investor, another RippleNet partner showing RippleNet versus Swift GPI, and they have all the criteria that they want to see, okay? Consortium of seven founding banks. We can see Ripple, efficient liquidity structures, etc. common standards. It's simply, you know, the future. CLS, continuous link settlement, RTGS again, just replacing these systems multi-channel organizations we can see ripple here ripple net payments right at the foundation of the look settlement gateway there's a variety of needs okay but we can see that they're integrated next up we have earthport again another behemoth visa acquired them um i forget what year but again for you know a couple hundred million dollars we can see ripple right here no question all right, and they're all connected, okay? So this is format, payment instructions. Again, this can kind of just be a ripple net, but we understand the settlement mechanism, the use case. Now we have SAP. SAP is working with, you know, the Ariba network, which is the biggest network in the world. We're talking billions upon trillions. There were, and that's backed and even teamed up with Goldman Sachs. Most of RippleNet's partners are Goldman Sachs backed, you know, Goldman Sachs backed companies. I can never say that. That's a tongue twister. I mean, we got, you know, even a bank here, group in Canada, ATB Financial with German Reese Bank, never ending, testing XRP, and it took 20 seconds over three days. 
with this transfer, okay? So we have all these groups helping and seeing what's happening. And then we even have Ripple Connect with AWS. Now, Amazon Web Services, guys, this cloud provider, this cloud platform, I should say, is going to be involved, in my opinion, with PolySign. And we'll talk about that at the end of this video. There's just so much information. I'm sorry if this is long and dragged out, but I just want to get this out there, okay? I want to brag about this with other XRP community members. And granted, this is, you know, other people's research. I'm just sharing it, okay? But I want to show you kind of and give you my two cents because I've seen others, my you know, my own, but this is really well put together, okay? So we understand this. Now check this out. This is a type of a payment message type format, MT103. So we can see with the SAP and Ripple integration, okay, so we see this type of messaging format. What does it mean? We see the Ripple Gateway and Ripple Connect AWS. This is specifically for cash transfer, specifically for cross-border international wire transfers. Okay, makes sense. Now Volante, another, again, tech provider for the clearinghouse that we mentioned that was i don't think i mentioned them but again they're integrated with ripple big surprise right via api right here we can see kind of what they're looking at executive sheet swift ach rtp and again the whole ach backbone network is overseen by nacha nacha and the alliance has partnered with ripple since what 2014 go ahead and google that yourselves too they watch and oversee the backbone of the entire ach backbone for the United States payments. Okay. What is it? Automated clearing house. This is huge guys. And it's all right in front of you that we have Volpe of Volante. One of their kind of solutions As we can see one solution for all cross-border payment clearing and settlement needs from traditional swift correspondent banking payments to alternative mechanisms. So one of the alternative mechanisms already can use again, RippleNet, AKA XRP. Right here, cross-border clearing and settlement, Swift GPI and Swift. We got Earthport again, which is RippleNet enabled. And then we have Ripple right in front of you guys. Real-time payments 24-7. We understand that. Now we understand that even highly efficient corridors can still benefit with XRP due to real-time and eventually with the flywheel effect become more cost-effective as well. All right, wider range of real-time clearings, manage the liquidity in real-time, all in a single rapidly deployable end-to-end -end solution on-premise or in the cloud. And yes, we will be talking about the cloud more and more, okay? We've talked about Zelle, we've talked about them and gone in depth with even the backing of them. And then look, right here, this is, uh, what was the SIA, I believe? Yeah, I think this is like SIA net. So look, Ripple, all three, application, platform, infrastructure, boom, right there, Swift GPI is just platform infrastructure, okay? All in one solutions. And yes, I mean, we have other platforms involved as well, Hyperledger, Corda, Ethereum, okay? R3 Marketplace, it's never ending, even AWS and Azure. Okay, Ripple, again, creator development. We can talk about the International Payments Framework Association, ACH, and then Nacho, which we just mentioned earlier. And then the Swift Institute, we've gone through this. I'm just kind of going through this because this article is gold and we're almost done with this one. So let's see. All right, future of correspondent banking. We've seen this before. We've talked about this probably like 10 times in the channel. Just want to reshow it for newcomers briefly. We can see the contributors on this group for cross-border payments. We can see from Swift and then Earthport, of course, no surprise. And then doo -doo -doo, Ripple. So again, Marcus Treacher, which we've shown above from experience at HSBC and Swift as well. And then Mr. Ryan Zagone as well. One of my favorite guys standing for regulation and his famous quote of proof of work does not work. Okay. And then you can kind of go through here. We understand of various groups that have had proof of concepts with RippleNet and Interledger protocol, such as the Bank of England right here. We can see additional RippleNet partners, UBS. I mean, even other groups, of course, they're creating their own permission blockchains with like util uh, utility settlement token, but you have to look deeper. Okay. Mizuho, Deutsche, just continuously do your own research and realize what's in front of us. All right, now this is actually from the CTO of Ripple. He's really active with the community. Used to be more interactive during kind of 2017 before the big run up. And then once XRP's price went, you know, three, four dollars, kind of laid back, but he still does interact. And this is what he said. My dream scenario is Swift makes a deal with Ripple, the company, where all their banks get to use RippleNet, you know, again, their software suite, or suite of software for free, maybe even paying Swift fits our XRP strategy perfectly. So it's clearly showing an incentive in their dream is for XRP to be used. It's not Ripple. They're not trying to get people to spend money to make them rich forever. That's highly illegal. There's an actual plan to use XRP. Now, the question is, do they want to do a soft rollout? Do they want to do 80 20? Or are they just taking their time now to wait for 100% market dominance? And then it's game time. We're not sure. Okay. So right here, it's possible Swift doesn't really have any good ability to raise money or seriously innovate. And yeah, I mean, they have a correspondent banking 
uh, partner. They don't have the money, guys. Understand Ripple is one of the highest valued companies to come out of Silicon Valley to date. All right. So again, this is all I am Legion. This link is in the description. You can literally click him here on Coil and read all of his other blogs if you're serious about kind of getting a foundation for XRP. And now what I recommend is when you're looking at these, go even deeper into each group and look at the connections or, you know, ask a community member. People are helpful and we're excited for the future. All right, let's get into the news now. So check this out. All right, guys, I'm going to try to be really brief with this news just to speed through it. I got a lot of stuff to do today. So again, you can follow me on Twitter at Kevin underscore cage underscore. Okay, everything I post or typically talk about is retweeted so you can continue to do your own research. All right. So right here, as we can see, Stuart XRP sharing this XRP underscore Stuart. So MoneyGram and Uber finally launch a partnership supporting drivers during the global pandemic. Remember that video or that picture, I should say, that we just showed again of uh, Lee from SPQR sharing it. And it was Uber connected with, you know, it was Uber, Amazon, a lot of the behemoths connected via one API to RippleNet. So understand that with Ripple doing a $50 million strategic acquisition, I say that in air quotes as they claim to call it that. And it's helping MoneyGram big time because they really didn't have any, you know, competitive edge over their competitor like Western Union. These are two of the biggest money service business groups in the world. So as strong demand for our digital capabilities continue to grow, we will we look forward to providing discounts on all money transfers made through our mobile application website to everyone earning on the Uber platform. I love these initiatives when companies kind of come together and work together for this. So again, you can see Uber and MoneyGram working together. You can see a quote from Alex Holmes, and he is you know, a big fan of XRP. He loves using it. He's excited to ramp up. Even um, he said it, or um, Greg Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple said, within them utilizing XRP, granted a low amount than what I want. He called them like the next day saying, let's go, let's ramp this up more. And uh, they came back with some conservative answers as always, okay? So if you guys want to read this article again, this is on prnewswire.com. Feel free to go through it. Again, I'm not saying this has to do with XRP. What I'm saying is this is setting the scene. All right, next, XRP Yo-Yo sharing this. So this clip is pretty cool. So again, all the derivatives, real estate will be tokenized. We've talked about this, the importance of tokenization, guys. Absolutely massive. And pay close attention to this 40-second clip. And just understand, this is not just words from me, some you know guy on Twitter, you know investors. This is huge. And this will be occurring. We're going digital. So you can only assume that value will be tokenized, even real estate. Granted, commercial real estate is easier to tokenize than residential. Now listen to this 40-second clip and understand this is $700 trillion. You think the cross-border you know, industry of $155 trillion or you know, some of the international payments, please wait until not only this, but just true derivatives, guys. 700 is kind of the mean, so you can go 500 trillion to even 1.2 quadrillion dollars, okay? Pay attention. All the rent through your digital tokens or tokenization. So FinTech and PropTech, currently the two largest markets which we are entering into the tokenization. And I'll tell you what PropTech is in one second. So all the derivatives, all the real estate would be tokenized and it's like a 700 trillion USD per year. And they will definitely be digitized by using such technologies as universal as through CBDC, through stable coins, square meters, all other assets. It would, might be gold, it might be intellectual property, it might be user-generated contact, or it might be your working hours. All such things would be easily tokenized. So if you... Okay, so the huge thing about this, guys, is where did I want to cover this? Um, okay, so prop tech, I mean, intellectual property will be huge as well. But just understand that this is kind of a use case for... What were we talking about that all the banks have backing in the W3C Interledger protocol? Now, Interledger protocol, they are agnostic when it comes to value. So they will be typically picking the fastest payment paths. This is a very complex ecosystem. We're going to always try to speak high level because I'm continuously learning as well. But there are some very, very smart people in this ecosystem that have taught me a lot as well. So understand ILP, digital asset, crypto asset agnostic. XRP obviously plays in tandem with IOP. I mean, come on, they have the same creators. Just understand that there are going to be some digital assets that bridge all of this value, not just central bank digital currencies. We're talking about real estate, anything that can be tokenized, okay? Now, 
property tech or you know property technology prop tech whatever you want to call it is also called real estate technology it's, it's the application of information technology and platform eco economics to real estate markets okay so basically just the tokenized real estate that he was referring to all right feel free to screenshot that or can you know continue to do your own research there all right, next up, Brad Garlinghouse going over this. Man, I, I just recommend you guys read this. Um, I'm going to try to link this in the description. This is a really, really long, good article, and it has a lot of hints that I've been trying to give on this channel for quite some time without saying it directly. So, U.S. regulators, now is the time to step up and lean into digital currencies. Remaining complacent is actually setting us back, the United States, while China's grip on both cryptocurrency and fiat payments becomes stronger. Now, this is a really, really good article, guys. Um, just talking about, you know, sanctions, getting away from the U.S. dollar reserve status. It's driving other countries. Again, watch AIIB, watch the Asian Development Bank, watch the Bank of International Settlements, watch the IMF, watch HSBC, watch these key players in this group. This is huge. Again, we know China, we know the People's Bank of China, uh, PBOC, with their digital currency, electronic payment methods. We understand, such as Alipay and WeChat, we've already talked about their integrations and connections too. RippleNet in detail. I think, you know, even I Am Legion has some great things. King Solomon has shared plenty. Eventually, you guys just realize there's too many coincidences for something not to happen, okay? Talking about the digital dollar. Now, one thing I want to talk about, if I can find it, um, is basically in reference to Instex, okay? So Instex, for example, guys, um, I'm trying to think how to say this. Instex is a very, very large group. Essentially, there's, you know, different payment systems, right? So we have Swift, we have, you know, China creating their own, which is SIPS, CIPS, which is cross-border interbank payment system. We have even the European Union nations kind of jointing, uh, joining together. And again, for Instex, and this is aiming to kind of facilitate non-SWIFT and non-US dollar denominated transactions, primarily with even Iran, which could be a national security threat to those in the United States. And keep in mind, I'm just kind of reading off the article here. All right. Um, you know, talking about SWIFT, here we go, uh, for protection, counterterrorism, right here, just as I was reading. Okay. Now, there's huge things in kind of connections with Instex and R3. Again, the consortium of hundreds of banks, some of the biggest guys in trade finance. I'm just saying, pay attention to that. Um, doing this, they don't need to rely on U.S. market infrastructure any longer. It's kind of creating that level playing field. And eventually, even the United States wants to create this level playing field of trust and interoperability. Um, there's, I just think there's a greater plan here. This is some tinfoil hat stuff. I don't want to go too in depth with it just remember that i you know tried saying that and we need interoperable digital systems privacy cross-border payments and data etc okay remember i told you that and today is well just remember it's end of may okay next up matthew liny showing this again we talked about the dtcc talked about them settling you know we'll go over it like 1.85 quadrillion dollars per year look at this job posting and again we have to understand the connections with cls with finastro with RippleNet. Looking for DLT knowledgeable programmers and AWS again with the cloud. We're seeing this time and time again. Java full stack developer, full time job in Tampa, if you guys know anybody. So as we can go, we'll just look at the actual listing. 2018 DTCC subsidiaries total process security transactions valued at the number I was saying 1.85 quadrillion dollars, guys. 170 countries, territories, $52.2 trillion. Just understand this is huge. They're processing 14 billion messages. This makes Swift, I mean, look relatively small as well, okay? There's a lot of money. All right, not talking about that, AWS. Just keep your eye out, okay? And then as we can see here, working, no or working knowledge of one or more DLT platforms. Hyperledger Fabric, R3 Corda is a plus. And then another thing that Mickey B. Fresh has been really pushing on and saying to pay attention to is this DAML, this DAML. Pay attention, okay? All right, next up. So I just wanted to share this again. Rath Economist showing there are a total of 55 banks operating on R3 Corda in the Spunta project. No, it has nothing to do with XRP, guys. Please stop saying that everything has to do with XRP. All right, it doesn't, okay? XRP, if it plays the role, that one role of kind of payments as a bridge asset that we want, we are good for settlements. But it's a significant step for DLT adoption. Remember, Spunta, with all these banks and these Italian banks, guys, is all about reconciliation, okay? This is just better interfaces, okay? 
can see here let's see build for switch api we've gone over spunta in great detail guys just understand it, and i think i say it right here spunta has nothing to do with settlement it's a great stepping stone reconciliation clearing messaging that's not xrp that's not needed okay this is not fun this is good for the entire ecosystem improve messaging clearing you know all of that first then we can go to the next stepping stone up a ladder then we can go to settlement which is xrp just like with rtp in the clearinghouse improve the domestic rails first then go to settlement or go after domestic work on cross-border and international interoperability and settlement got it all right next king solomon xrp underscore owl they've been preparing for years baft i'm going to say baft baft futures leaders program for distributed ledger tech i mean guys this is just in the books if you think that this is all coming out in 2020 now it's false. We're just trying to connect the dots so it makes sense going forward. Interestingly enough, I only see one financial technology company that enables blockchain capabilities, again, with DLT and it's Ripple, listed among some of the largest banks in the world. And we can look, I mean, throughout this slide again, it's a nine pager if you guys want to go through this. But again, I'm sure it's just another coincidence. We have Ripple right here, okay, San Francisco. We have PNC, again, a RippleNet partner. Um, you know, Bank of America, RippleNet partner. Scotiabank. We have all these groups, guys. Intesa San Paolo. I mean, just all right in front of you. Just remember that future leaders, blockchain team. All these are essentially banks. And we just have Ripple here. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Because again, they do need a consult a consulting role, but who are these banks going to trust and interoperate with? Okay. You need a open sourced permissionless ledger. BAFT future leaders, distributed ledger technology, blockchain and transaction banking applications. Okay maybe RippleNet. So who we are, BAFT is the leading international transaction banking association providing advocacy through membership, blah, 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 blah. Okay, you get it. Feel free to pause it. I'm going to continue. Okay, and again, the Bankers Association for Finance and Trade. All right. Next up, guys, blockchain.com. Finally, since 2011, as we can see, now lists XRP. This is on XRP Arcade. Thanks to Leonidas, guys. Please check out this website and support this gentleman. Awesome information. Again, guys, one of the biggest groups in the world. It is seeming that we are appearing to get more and more clarity and interest in XRP, even from the groups that never wanted to list XRP and had a vested interest in only paying attention or showing Bitcoin and Ethereum. Okay, pay close attention to that. Next, right here, I am Legion showing this. Just interesting before I talk about one last point. So again, company announcements, we have NASDAQ. Remember, they have the XRPL, the XRP Ledger Liquidity Index. Why? Remember, their partnership with R3. Why? Okay, now they're consolidating their centrals, central securities depository. Again, this is the CSDs that we talked about in the previous video as well. We can see all throughout Europe. So we understand that's kind of connected with not only, you know, Latvia, but also with Iceland. This is making me think of some other connections with Ripple, with Algram. Now, it doesn't really have anything to do with it. I'm just kind of, you know, spitballing here and thinking of the connections with Iceland as well. All right, understand these connections we've talked about custodians, CSDs, etc. All right, in that previous video, a lot of information from Mickey B. Fresh. All right, Finextra. All right, and then lastly, I want to talk about this. So, we had the latest again, the podcast from David Schwartz Blockstar's biometric authentication will help you forget your passwords. I'm actually kind of restarting it and wanted to listen to it a little in depth because I found this tweet. And I want to go through this talking about keyless. Again, David Schwartz, CTO, one of the largest frictions around crypto security. Because again, if everything's going tokenized, we have all of these assets, is a digital, invisible, kind of intangible value. How are we going to protect it? This is where security measures are going to be stepping up big time, even biometrics. So he's speaking here with this chat with Keyless Tech. We can see them, deep tech cybersecurity company building the world's first privacy preserving biometric authentication and personal identity management platform. ID is going to be a must. I know a lot of YouTubers have been talking about this and digital ID, global ID, pay attention. This is big. This is much bigger than we think. And it has to do with PolySign, okay? And he'll show all the proof right here. So again, Mickey B. Fresh showing this and we'll kind of go right here. So Keyless is a spring. It's pronounced spring for the last time, not X spring. <laughs> spring investment. Again, they're kind of just building the open source protocols and everything for building on the XRP ledger. Okay. So it's still driving demand for XRP while Ripple's just kind of working and signing business development contracts and things of that nature. Okay. It's another vital piece of infrastructure, guys, in the ecosystem. We need the security. We need custodians. We need people to actually store these assets before institutional money can come pouring in. Okay. So being built by Ripple and its partners. That's directly related to what PolySign is doing. Again, another company with Arthur Brito and David Schwartz, okay? This is 
for standard custody of the biggest groups in the world. This is next level tech and cryptography. So right here, going hand in hand with David Schwartz, PolySign cryptocurrency security platform. They're looking for a senior backend engineer, architect, build business logic, et cetera, central services. Right here, methods of biometric authentication. I don't know a lot of groups that are working on this, specifically with Ripple, and we just had a podcast with Keyless. So you guys can call me crazy, but I think it's safe to assume that Keyless may be working with Ripple and even potentially PolySign. And yes, you can expect some non-disclosure agreements, but let's just kind of check this out. So architect and build the PolySign backend working with PolySign, cloud services team. Remember, plenty of integrations with AWS as well. So we'll see, um, just speculation there. But of course, cloud will play a fundamental role in this. All right, so looking at these role descriptions, groundbreaking security, patented, systemic security enables best-in-class storage, transactions, and payments. PolySign will play one role, and then standard custody will play another, okay? It's going to be this massive platform. Raising the standard and regulation and compliance integrate with existing financial organizations and global markets. That is key. We have to have a smooth integration, a smooth bridge, smooth version of standards and interoperability so that all this capital can easily transfer to this new system and kind of be, you know, not too obvious or too clunky. We want it to be seamless, right? Rigor rigorously, excuse me, embrace the highest standard for regulation. And then lastly, proprietary blockchain tech, architects, as I said, Arthur Brito and David Schwartz designed PolySigns technology, all right? Their third generation proprietary private blockchain tech is foundational to the development of the digital asset infrastructure. This is much bigger than even just XRP. This is validation to the entire space of not just open sourced, but all tokenized assets. Okay, and guess what? They still need interoperability, and one of the biggest names in the game is Ripple. So I believe that they do have a vested interest for XRP, and this is just kind of going out of the box and you know looking beyond that. Okay, so again, this was all shared by Mr. Fresh Time on Twitter. Mickey B. Fresh has a YouTube channel. Check it out. Okay, guys, I'm sick of hearing my own voice. Hopefully, this kind of makeshift microphone is okay while I'm fixing my other one. Remember to check the links in the description. I appreciate all of you that like, share this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.